Welcome back to Disera Media Literacy, the radio series that aims to educate and empower listeners to navigate the media landscape in a critical and informed way. So how do we know if information is credible? What we see online is dictated by complex algorithms that profile and classify us based on our likes and searches. Advertising can then be targeted and customised to give greater revenue to the social media company. This also means that we are most likely to attract information that already resonates with us and connect with people who all have similar views. If everyone in our network is believing and sharing the same information, it just confirms our bias and makes it more difficult to look critically at any of the data we are receiving. We have already learned in our first programme that as we get older, we are more trusting of relationships, including online contacts, and also more likely to take information as truth the more we hear it. Being aware of these algorithms and the unbalanced information we are receiving is the first step in looking at information more critically. With so much information available online, it can be difficult to know what to trust. Here are some tips for evaluating the credibility of news sources. Firstly, when we are looking at a news item, we need to try to establish if it is valid or accurate. Is it based on data that can be verified and is not misleading? Secondly, is it inaccurate? Is it information that is misleading by either having been manipulated or not completed? Thirdly, is the information false? Has it been disproved by data? And fourthly, is it unsustainable? Is it information that has no available data to either disprove or confirm? There are a number of ways we can do this. Look for sources that have a good reputation for accuracy and impartiality. Check the domain name of the source of information to see if it comes from a reputable site. .gov, which is a government agency. .org, which is a registered organisation. Or .edu, which is an educational institution. Look for the blue badge or check to see if the account has been authenticated. Many media outlets and public figures have these. Check the author's credentials and expertise on the subject matter. Make sure that domain names match the name of an organisation. There may be discrepancies in spelling. Check that there is contact information and an about page when looking at source organisations or media outlets. Look for sources that provide evidence and support of their claims. Check when the article was posted. Is it old news that is being used out of context or an old photo that is being used to mislead or manipulate? Be wary of sources that use sensational or biased language. Most fake news stories post the headline in capital letters with exclamation marks. Is the article triggering an emotional response such as fear, panic, guilt or empathy? These seeded posts are planted to encourage people to share widely. Is the post going viral on platforms that are not vetted or poorly monitored? Be sceptical of information that confirms your pre-existing beliefs or opinions. Be mindful of how you word your online searches. For example, use phrases like iPhone and Android comparison rather than is iPhone better than Android? With the latter, your search results will produce information to support that iPhone is better than Android. 
So what are the red flags to watch out for? There are certain red flags to watch out for when evaluating the credibility of news sources. Sensational headlines that are meant to grab your attention or create an emotional response. No author or source listed. Lack of evidence or support for claims. Or use of language that is biased or partisan. And what is the role of fact-checking organisations? Fact-checking organisations play an important role in helping to separate fact from fiction. These organisations review news stories and claims to determine their accuracy. Some popular fact-checking organisations include Snopes, PolitiFact, FactCheck, BBC Reality Check, Channel 4 FactCheck, Reverse Image Search from Google. In our next episode, we'll take a look at online media in a bit more depth and explain some of the terminology that is associated with technology associated with false news. Be sure to tune in for the fourth episode of Disarat Media Literacy. In the meantime, don't forget to check out our website for more information and resources on media literacy. Thank you for tuning in to Disrupt Media Literacy. Until next time, stay informed, stay curious and stay media literate. So we've just been listening to evaluating the credibility of news and information. How do we do that? Well, there are, it is very important to, we don't all have the tools, but we can look towards news organisations which have the tools. And there are some out there and there, there, are, uh, there are ways that we can do it as well. But just for example, you know, there's a, there's a serious crisis and a lot of violence in the Middle East right now. And there was a bombing of a hotel, uh, of a hospital, excuse me. There was a bombing of a hospital in Gaza. It was a horrific attack. So obviously it's, it's going to impact on viewers opinions of who uh, carried out that attack. So Israel blamed the Palestinians, the Palestinians blamed Israel. So how does the average consumer of news know who's telling the truth? So BBC have a, a section called BBC Verify. So BBC being a big news organisation in the UK. And they have a section called BBC Verify where they go out of their way to fact check to find out what's true. So they contacted um, 20 organisations. Some of them had expertise in weapons. Some of them were universities. Some of them were think tanks. And six, six of them got back uh, and participated in the process where they looked at things like the whistling sound of the incoming projectile, the lights in the sky, the impact on the ground, uh, the explosion, all of those kinds of things. And they tried to assess, could this be an Israeli rocket or could it be uh, an, uh, a Palestinian rocket? So throughout that entire process, the results were actually inconclusive. So that shows if a, a load of experts who get together can't tell whether something is true, can't tell who's telling the truth and who isn't, how are we as consumers of news who don't have access to these experts and don't have access to those tools, how are we supposed to tell the truth? And it just shows how difficult it is when you are following news online to tell who is who you can trust and who you can't. Yeah, mm. yeah. well, I think it comes down to, uh, you know, there's, there's a couple of things. I think um, we talked about, you know, polarisation uh, of, of people, but we've also, I think, simplified things where we're not looking at the nuances. You know, we're not looking at the difference between, for example, Jewish people and um, Zionists. And we're not looking at the difference between um, Hamas and Palestinians. Mm. We're just saying you know, Jews and Palestinians or Israelis and Palestinians or whatever labels. We're labelling people into big groups, you know what I mean? Um, mm. So I think that's one of, that's one of the difficulties. Um, um, and then, you know, I think, uh, you know, it's very, very hard to um, follow that story and wait for the truth to emerge because the reactions and the emotions just happen immediately. So I, I think what, what ends up happening is, again, the people who already have an opinion about one side or another make up their mind that it was you know the, the atrocity was committed by the other side and and you know and they they don't wait and by the time somebody comes along saying wait I found the answer it's it's the world has moved on and I think that's one of the the great difficulties you know yeah, yeah. 
What about yourself? Yeah, it's about emotion and that's the yeah. whole political in the political sphere as well. And pe people don't want to know the truth. They want the truth to or they want what they believe to be the truth to fit their narrative that they're preconditioned to to believe. Um, but just on that on that hospital uh, episode, I mean, the, the, the BBC are very good and they uh, that whole uh, uh, fact checking uh, and enterprise in the BBC is, is brilliant. Uh, Marianne Spring, isn't it? Uh, she's great. But the a, a, B, at least one BBC um, uh, reporter uh, did uh, say it could only be Israel at the at the start mm -hmm. of when it could could even days later we're still trying to figure it out with all of the scientific fact checking going on. So I mean that that was just a just a breach of of, of standard, you know, common sense. Yeah, you know, you, you you don't go out on a limb. It's and 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 how you use your mm -hmm. your language. And also on that on that on that story, I thought that um, the information that was coming out online was quite impressive as well. If you had it from the right sources and mm. you trusted them, so you know you're not going to trust some bot with you know first name bunch of numbers guy who's <laughs> <laughs> you know whose account dates back to you know last week uh, or, or or it's another account that you know very well and that has interacted with you know is has been is followed by other respect so it's like mm. a, a, it's like friends and and you know in in, in human society um you know <laughs> Going back to the dawn of of human society, if somebody tells lies, they're a liar, mm. and they're not going to be trusted. Mm. That's mm. Th you know that's something that we need to learn online as well. Yeah. That once somebody starts or it has you know, and it was very hard to get back that trust because you're labelled you you know mm -hmm. in in a society a clo you know the people would have would have lived quite closely together. Very once you went over that line and became a liar it'd be very hard to get back mm -hmm. so it's the same thing online if somebody is yeah. giving you bad information then yeah. you know they're they're not to be trusted yeah and i think i think accountability is a big thing because um for example if i go to a restaurant um for me what makes a great restaurant is not that they never make a mistake it's when they make a mistake it's yeah. how they deal with it. And of course, journalists and news agencies and all of those people, you know, it, there's humans behind them. So there will, there will, they'll get it wrong sometimes, you know, but it's how they, it's fessing up and saying, you know, apologies, mm. we got that wrong. You know what I mean? And this is what, these are the steps we're taking to make sure that that doesn't happen again. That You know what I mean? Um, you know, so, so I think that's, you know, that's one of the, one of the things is, you know, as you, you spoke about certain academics you're, you're following on, on Twitter or whatever, it's when you have a trusted source like that, you know, and then, you know, especially somebody who, if they do get it wrong, will, will say, look, sorry, you know. That's really important. And that's a, you know, a tradition of the best, media outlets that they will always correct the, what, yeah. when they get something wrong and uh, so it'll be very interesting to see how what happens with the hospital um, story and and if if they do that I, I mean uh, another point is that it's not just about liar people deliberately telling lies it's about people not bothering to you know take too much time to consider what they're putting out there or mm. the, the they're processing information for you or how reliable are they as a source and you know yeah. I've, I've been trained and it's in my sort of DNA now to be very careful about what I would put out there but um, you know a lot of people are just shooting their mouths off so yeah, is that online, a, well, it's they may free, not, yeah. free they, for all yeah they yeah. may not believe they may not be telling yeah. lies yeah. they may believe what they say but how reliable yeah. are they I think in, in the last discussion we, we were talking about misinformation and a lot of people will share information um, you know believing that it's yeah. it's true yeah. but it's there's a carelessness about it and we are so bombarded with information that you know it's a lot easier to to oh I hear that and pass it on you know yeah. so and Fiona you mentioned in an earlier episode about how the community often through the comments section um, will police misinformation but also um, I find and I'm sure a lot of other older people find or other, other people in general um you know, that when there are many um, of those comments that seem to be pushing a certain agenda 
And you mentioned earlier on, are you going to believe a trust news or, or Joe Bloggs who maybe set up his account? And I think that's something important for people to actually click in to the person who's written the yeah. comment and look at their profile. And if it's, um, you know, they've very few friends or if they've just, a, you know, a, a dog or something as their profile picture. And, um, you know, you can be quite sure that that's just been set up yeah. in order to to you know, make make a certain part or, or yeah. you know, add to this, like a, a troll, yeah. I suppose. Just on that, in fact, I'm, I have a, a Facebook group with 12,000 or so members and um, there's an automatic thing that if if they have only joined Facebook within the last month, it, it, it get their membership of the group gets held until I look at it. And it's really good at pick, you know, uh, so many times then you go and, and, and it's somebody, they've got a one week old profile and they've got one picture of a dog and nothing else. And you just, you know, you, so, so, I mean, that simple thing of just seeing how long has somebody had the account for is is a, a really good it, it weeds out such a lot yeah. that's a great start and it's a big thing on Instagram as well because I get followed by an awful lot of people who have no posts and only a tiny amount of followers <laughs> and, you, and most of what you were saying yeah. you get targeted by military people a lot of surgeons follow me for some oh. reason so <laughs> I, but, but I, so I, I don't know it is, it is weird but it is about checking who people are yeah. and seeing even people who have a long history of being on, on those platforms Look at their posts and are they accurate? Are they checked out? Are yeah. th- what is the tone of them? So tone of voice is tremendously important. Yeah. And when you have r- something in writing, it doesn't carry the same tone of voice as something audiovisual where you have somebody's facial expressions or the way that they're speaking. So it, the, the tone of something that you write, the words you write comes out much stronger when you put it in mm-hmm. just text on a page. Yeah. So people need to be aware of that. Yeah. And um, also, I mean, even, you know, you're saying people um, asking you to be friends and that that's another thing to you know to to click on check um you know the person's profile but in the comment section as well it's something i'd make a point of doing if um, i think people you know react to to a conversation and react to a comment and possibly a lot of the time don't click in but if you do find um that this is just you know maybe a fake profile to not engage in conversation. I mean, that would be something, a tip that I would Mm -hmm. um, give to people um, online. Is there anything that you would advise like in? Well, in terms of media checking, I mean, there are things you can do. So, for example, Storyful, which is a a news gathering and checking organisation that was set up by an Irish journalist that takes. So we're in an age of citizen journalism where Social videos are made by people on uh, on the ground. It could be an eyewitness to uh, a newsworthy event that happened. It can be somebody who was uh, who is in the middle of a war zone. So I follow a lot of people who are on the ground in Ukraine in the war, and I check them out. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of people there uh, who may may not be very aware of how to use social media, but there's certain people who are extremely good at using social media, and then I have to look at them and say, are they uh, putting out propaganda or are they telling me what what's happening? So I look at who. Who has shared their content? Are they picked up by respectable organisations? Some of them have actually been interviewed on Irish radio and that gives them credibility. So it's, it's assessing those things. So you can look at something like Storyful to, to see has it been uh, approved? Has it been verified? They will check if, if citizen journalism videos are real. Mm-hmm. You can also go to something like the Pointer Institute, which runs media literacy courses online. And it's for, there's some for older people specifically and there's some for Gen Z, the younger people. Uh, there's They have videos, they have lots of workshops and that's there's lots of, that's just one organisation but there's lots of free training online in media literacy to help us all because yeah. we're all learning all the time all the to time. help all of us to try and get better at this. And it's an ever evolving thing. Yes. And um, thanks so much for the discussion and look forward to talking on this subject a bit more. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.